If you're looking for a bare bones 1080p camera that you can vlog with, then I would highly recommend looking into the Canon EOS RP. Today I'm out here with the Canon RP and do another test on it. I haven't done a video on this camera in a while, so thought I'd bring it out. All right, so let's go over the gear that I'm using today. Today I'm using the Canon EOS RP, the Canon RF 16 millimeter f 2.8. I also have a Freewell 77 millimeter filter on it with a step up ring in order for it to fit. For the audio, I'm using the X Vive U6, but with all of that aside, let's go over some of the general requirements of what makes a good vlog camera. So I would say there are four general requirements that makes a camera a good vlog camera. It shoots in at least 1080p, it has stabilization, it has a flip out screen, and it has a mic input. Now they are arguable because I think you can vlog with a camera that does not have a flip out screen. So this is all subjective, but I think for today's standards, most people are looking for a camera that has a flip out screen. And I think with those four requirements, the Canon RP checks all of those boxes. The Canon RP does have stabilization. It has e-stabilization and it has two levels of stabilization. One is kind of just like an active and then an extra active stabilization. They do crop into the sensor, but they don't crop in far to where it's like, it's gonna chop off your head. But let me demonstrate what those stabilization levels are. This is me walking at a steady pace without stabilization. As you can see, there are there's some Definitely some jitter, some movement. And I'm gonna turn on the first level of stabilization. And here's the first level of stabilization. There's still some movement, but not as much. But let's turn on the second level of stabilization and see the difference. Okay, now we're at stabilization level two, the max stabilization you can put on the camera. I think this is where the Canon crop is at an extreme. I don't think the crop on these cameras is really that bad. It just gives you a different focal length. So I would say using a stabilization gives you a more versatile camera even with using just the prime lens. So right now, stabilization is off. I'm sitting in the car, I'm stationary, I don't need stabilization on. But let me switch on stabilization to the first one and we'll see how far it crops in. This is the second level of stabilization. Now I'm gonna show a side by side of, of both stabilization on and stabilization off. So this side right here, where I, where I am talking right now, this is where the audio is coming from. This is where the stabilization is at level one. And on the other picture you're seeing is where the stabilization is off. But let's turn on stabilization two and we'll show stabilization one and two. Okay, so what you're looking at now is stabilization level two. This is how far it crops in. This is where the audio is coming from, but you're gonna look at the other side and that's where stabilization two is. The difference between the two crops between stabilization level one and stabilization level two. And this is where I will argue that with the 16 millimeter, you do have different focal lengths. Next, we're gonna look at image quality. And just like in the previous video I made about image quality with the Canon RP, which I link below the subscribe button in the description, we're gonna look at how much information we can retain in the image and when exposing for the subject. And that is everything from the lightest portion of the image to the darkest portion of the image. So how much information can you see without manipulating the image? And this is what the image looks like without any manipulation. How much information, the darkest part, so I would say, which is a seat back here behind me, and the lightest part, which is outside of this window right here, how much information we can actually see with this unedited image and then how much we can actually bring back once we edit it. So I'll turn the edits back on. This is a kind of a well-lit situation. So the dynamic range is pretty good in the Canon RP. All right, so here we are. Lighting is a little more dynamic and we can see as I walk through the streams of light where it gets lighter and darker, some washed out somewhere where the light is a little more even. But this is just an example of looking at where the lighting is a little more dynamic where the sensor can't really keep up with it. So I, I gotta admit, I uh, started this video two week, two days ago, two weeks. <laughs> I started this video two days ago. I'm now on day three, trying to finish out this vlog. So I guess since we're out here, I guess we can test out the low light <laughs> as if this camera is really good at low light, but it's still pretty bright out here. This is not a real low light test. The lens is at F2.8, ISO at 3200. The sun is over that way and now I'm getting being covered by some trees. I think if you live in a city, it's still a good camera you can use at night with the city lights. Like I said, the one thing to highlight with these Canon cameras is that as long as you are in decent lighting, the image that comes out of the Canon cameras look pretty good. I'm walking at a normal pace, not trying to suppress my steps. I'm pretty sure you're getting all the bumps. If you're not really into 
videography or anything like that and you just want to record content, Canon RP can be beat. <laughs>